everyone. My name is Jeff Bull. And I'm Rick Bauer. Rick, it is so cool to be back here at Cisco Live in person. It's been what feels like, well, actually, no, it has been years. That actually has been years. <laughs> um, and it's really fun to kind of be actually in the DevNet zone again and be in person. We're getting to meet for the first time in person, which is so cool. This feels like a regular story, this, this event, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what I, I wanted to chat with you about is we're in the DevNet zone. Like, everything that we do here surrounds APIs and the concepts of, like, programmability or, or automating things. Um, and I'm really curious from your perspective, what, what initially got you into the idea of even wanting to automate something or write a bit of code to solve a problem for yourself? Like what, what kind of instigated that for you? You know, so it's funny. So we, we say in, you know, in IT, everything's cyclical, right? So I started out as a database programmer in 1998 or whatever it was, or 88. And <clears throat> then I kind of made the shift into networking and I've been doing that for the last 30 plus years. And I'm kind of, I think, the guy that DevNet's trying to reach as the, you know, the command line guy, the CCIE, the, you know, the guy who's spent his time in the trenches with code. And what, what's happened is the network has grown in complexity so that it's exceeding human scale. So we have to automate. There's just no way around it. It's, it there's too many things to do and too little time and staffs are getting smaller. So we're doing more with less and, and the only way to do that is through automation. Yeah, I totally agree. I'm really glad you brought up the idea of like the classic, so I call it the classic network engineer, uh, the CCIE, someone who's been working route switch and, and these sorts of uh, protocols and concepts for a long time. And I find it so interesting because a few years ago when we came out with the DevNet certifications, um, there was a lot of worry and there has been for a long time amongst the classic audience about, well, I don't want to be forced into becoming a programmer. Like I don't want to fo be forced to become a coder. And it, it it's interesting because whenever I've tried to have those conversations, it's like, no, the idea is we don't want you to become a software developer. Like that's that's not the goal. The goal is, like you said, these problems have become so much more complex that what we need your brain power and others out there, what your brains need to be on is the complex problem and how to solve that. Right. The the things that we automate are these I don't want to say they're menial tasks, but they're things that don't require a lot of thought because you're just repeating them over and over again. Like, we want to get that off of people's plates, yeah. put it over here so it just happens, so you can put your brain under the really important stuff because I have to imagine, and you've probably been through, either through organizations or customers you've worked with where problems that you have dealt with or you work with them on are these big complex problems that they don't know how to deal with it. So if you're talking to a customer or you're working in an organization, how would you even broach that conversation about Here's how we can help you solve a problem. I usually use a story, and the story is pretty much along those lines. How many times are you going to configure that switch port? Is it still exciting the 100,000th time that you've done it? And, and, and again, that's the type of, you know, that operational task, those menial or repetitive tasks, those are the things that kind of clear the plate and allow you to do more with project work or complex problem break fix stuff that, that requires the attention. So, and, and, and that's really where it comes down to. And as a TSA in, in campus automation, my job is to sell DNA Center, so an automation platform. And it's, it's, about, it's about optimizing your time and your work and making it better for, for the organization. Because again, if you have to send a high-priced engineer out to plug a switch in, cable it, bench it, whatever, all the stuff in between as opposed to automating through plug and play or ZTP, right? And you know, that's, those are just some of the real simple things that we can do that free up so much time because those are things that are huge heat sinks. It's, it's really interesting that you bring up these particular concepts because I, I, I was thinking about this earlier that, and you said it, storytelling. Stories are the things that like connect us all together. They just, yeah. they absolutely are. Um, if anyone's followed like Joseph Campbell and the hero's journey, like these stories are what like actually capture our attention. And so I kind of want you to tell a story if you don't mind. Thinking about maybe some conversation you had with somebody, a customer, a colleague, when you were a network engineer yourself, uh, you know, doing operations. What's an instance where you had something happen where you're like, well, let me just show you how to solve that through this. Let's all broadly use the term automation. Like, we'll just automate this. So let me just show you this. Where that person saw it and went, oh, oh my gosh. So that's what you've been talking about? Like, yeah. you probably have a few of them, but like, what's, what's one time when that happened where that, that aha moment for somebody else where it just clicked? I personally like things that where you can show, you know, a positive result. And 
Um, it's not so much on the automation side, but it's more on the programmability, well, it's more on the modeling and, and um, uh, so model-driven telemetry is one of those that mm -hmm. I find, you know, because we do things the old way, right? We do them with SNMP and syslog and command line and to get the, the, this telemetry out and it's stale, it's old. And when you can show somebody, so a, a quick script that I have is just to push the, the, um, the subscriptions out to a router and it's a BGP, um, two, three routers in a BGP triangle and they're sending, one, one router sending 100 routes, the other one sending 200 routes, and router in the middle is catching them, and I show what happens and how fast the, the, it reacts with, with model-driven telemetry when you shut that interface down and those BGP routes go away. So through a TIG stack, where you can actually see this line just drop, whereas with older protocols, it, you're going to wait five, 10, 15 minutes, depending on your polling cycle. So, that's one that I really like because it's 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 part programmability because we're we're doing some stuff through a Python script and then we're taking model driven telemetry and then we're visualizing what we're getting yeah. and that just rounds it all out yeah. for a lot of people. Yeah, I it's I thank you for sharing. That's a it's a really it's a really great story for a number of reasons. But to your point, I, I love this idea of being a bridge, of bridging sort of these technologies that have existed for I mean all these technologies have existed for a long time. Software developers use and their tools, network engineers years use and their tools, and now that we have APIs available to us on a lot of hardware, we can connect software methodologies and tools to them to do things like this. Yeah. That doesn't require you becoming, you know, a, a, a comp side person or a full software developer that is working in an IDE all day long, writing applications for a business, but you can leverage the tools that they have designed for your own benefit. This also means, um, someone that I work with, we probably have all heard this term, but. Uh, the whole idea of the art of the possible, and like I love to think of it as like the art of what's possible, and sort of like in that story. And I, I'd love to hear if you've got any other any other like uh, story similar to this, where you know you talk to someone and they they finally get to see like what is possible when you're like I spent five minutes and I was able to do this. Yeah. Imagine what you could get out of that if you spent I don't know another 15, or if you gave it to somebody who really knew what they were doing for another 15 minutes. What else would come out of that? Think about any customer you've talked to. And your role is a, a technical architect yeah. for Cisco. Um, Think about a customer you've talked to, or a partner, or someone else you've talked to, or been at an event like Cisco Live or the DevNet Zone, yeah, yeah. and talk to somebody, and they're like, they see this thing, or they just come out of a session, and they learn something, like, I just don't know what really what to do with that information. Some conversation like that you've had with someone, where you kind of help them just see that all you need to do is this one thing, or some small thing, and they get excited all of a sudden. I think when I show them the what's out there, what's available, like what work has already been done, that they can just simply just kind of manipulate, and change to suit their needs. Mm -hmm. they, and that's really kind of where they get it. Like you, to your earlier point about, we don't, you don't need to be a developer, you know, but you need to know some programming, right? Some skills, you have to have some, some knowledge there because you can take what's already been done and do it and use it in your, in your manner. And I mean, there's tons of stuff. I mean, we have tons of stuff. You, DevNet has tons of stuff that's out there, you know, different, different uh, Python scripts or or um, even uh, solutions that are already packaged, you know, and you can just download from Git and just tweak them a little bit and yeah. make it make it useful. And when they see how easy that is, it's like, well, I think the I hope I think I see the light bulb go off. But they're like, wow, it's really not that bad. You know, as we kind of wrap up, I really love that what you just said there. That if you look on GitHub or if you go to developer.cisco.com, where we have a lot of resources, including our code and automation exchanges, the thing that you can find in those tools is. I think a technical thing and a like a mental state. One of them is technically you can go to GitHub and find these other things that have been built. And I think the other side of that is knowing that someone has likely solved this problem already or yeah. been through it. We have to imagine, like we, it, the networks are not a new thing. People have been through these problems before. You're going to find someone who's built something that is pretty close to what you're dealing with and you can just then tweak it to make it your own. And that's yeah. fantastic because not only not only do you get the benefit of some other technology out there, but that's automation. Someone already automated that problem for you. Yeah. You don't have to necessarily go through and learn all of this. Yeah. It's just done for you already. Yeah. Rick, thank you so much for being yeah, here. This has great. been fantastic. And if anybody looking for more information, go to developer.cisco.com slash Cisco Live. Look forward to seeing you here at the event.